Oh yeah, it's not quite high. I don't know how long I can sit on this though. I don't know where you might be on this part. Oh, I tossed it out. I didn't want to put it under the chair. Didn't want. All right. Good morning, everyone. How is everybody today? Great. Awesome. Awesome. So we're gonna, we're about to get started here. So long as this is going to work on Battery's working here. Off and back on. Right? I'm glad I double checked this before I actually get got ready yeah, right to talk about disruption. Uh, technology is great when it works. Now what's your option? Hit the button on the computer instead of use this thing. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. uh, unless I need a laser for it. Looks like I'm going to go manual today. All right. Is that Zeke here? No, Zeke's not here. Oh. It's somebody else. Well, <laughs> yeah, not unless he snuck in while I wasn't watching. Yeah. All right. Well, welcome, everyone. Everybody get the notes back in? Yeah, good, good. So we've got two handouts this morning. We've got your non-toxic clean, cleaning recipes, right? This is spring clean. And then on the back of this Max Cleanse Detox System, this is where I want you guys taking notes today. Okay? So, yeah. I've got a lot of good stuff for you guys. Great. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to see a new face, or slightly new face. Yeah. <laughs> but very similar. <laughs> you can tell there's a relation this there. This is Cindy. Hi, Cindy. Hi. Welcome. Welcome. So, uh, yeah, I think most of everybody else here has been to multiple classes. So if you need some catch-up, feel free to raise your hand and ask questions. We do have a live stream audience joining us as well today. So anything you say will be broadcast oh to Facebook. <laughs> and we're going to do this class in two parts. So just so you guys are aware of what's going on today. Um, I'm going to be talking about uh, our beauty products, our cleaning products, toxins that surround us, how to avoid those in the first half, and then we're gonna take a break, and then Facebook won't join us for the second stuff, just because with the Facebook algorithms right now, that that half may end up being censored. So, you know, that's where the good stuff's happening, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. those of you that are here today, good job, you showed up, you're gonna get all the good stuff. Um, those of you that are joining us online, you may actually wanna jump in your cars and drive down here so you can get all the good stuff, right? <laughs> all right, so, uh, yeah, anybody know? what it means to do the same thing over and over again and expect different results. <laughs> no, it's the definition of insanity, right? Oh, yeah. oh, right. Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting oh, different results is the definition of insanity. And when you look <laughs> at the way that we do health in the United States of America today, what do we do over and over again? We wait until we get a symptom, then we go to our medical doctor, he diagnoses us based off of our signs and symptoms, gives us a medication to treat those signs and symptoms, and then if those symptoms go away, great, you must be fixed, or alternatively, if they don't go away, another test, another diagnosis, another medication, and if that doesn't work, you go back to maybe a different doctor, we'll say a special doctor. Yeah. He'll do a special test, offer you a special diagnosis, a special drug, all for a special price. He's called a specialist, by the way. Yeah. And if that doesn't work, then you go to a surgeon who's going to do a surgical consult and assess whether our bodies were designed inaccurately or errant, and you're better off without the organ cells and tissues oh. that God designed to put in there in the first place. Yes. That's our medical system. Now, 20 years ago, I'd say, how well do you think our medical system is working? And everybody in the room would be like, we're the best of the best. And it's like a patriotic answer. But since 2000, I'd say eight, we've kind of had this brought into the limelight, just how poor our medical system is, right? But it's not poor because we're poor. We spend more money on healthcare than any other country in the world. In fact, the best doctors in the world come to practice in the United States because we have the best facilities. We have some of the best access. It doesn't matter if you're in line at the back of the line. If you pay enough money, you can get the best of the best medical care yes. in the United States of America. And so all the other countries in the world strive to do health care 
like we do here. Maybe not from a political perspective, but definitely from a practical perspective. But in spite of all the money that we spend on healthcare, right? We, it's the number one cause of bankruptcy in the United States. It breaks down to $11,000 per person every single year, $25,000 if you're over the age of 65. We're 37 out of 37 industrialized nations when it comes to healthcare system performance. And when it comes to our actual health, we're 72nd overall. 72nd. And really, it breaks down to three key areas. And you guys have probably heard me talk about this before, but write it down again. The reason our healthcare system is broken, number one, is we're reactive instead of proactive. We wait until there's a symptom before we do anything about it. The second reason, I'll give you just a second. <laughs> Get your pens working, right? Get, yeah, the, the wetness down to the pen tip. The second reason that our healthcare system doesn't work is because we don't know what health is. And how do I know? Because we're basing our health on how we feel. If you wake up in the morning and you feel good, you think you're healthy. But if you take the top three killers in the United States, number one, anybody got it? Heart, heart, heart. Yeah, cardiovascular disease, responsible for 840,000 deaths last year. If you waited until you felt it, you waited 20 years of having it diagnosably in your body before you felt the first symptom. What was that first symptom 63% of the time? Oh. Meaning the heart attack. It was the heart attack itself 63% of the time. If you waited until you felt heart disease, you waited until you had a heart attack. Cancer, same thing. 20 years of having it before you get a symptom. At 10 years, cancer is considered lethal. And we know that we have to be proactive with cancer. And so we go in for early screenings, right? PET scans, CT scans, MRIs. Usually you start off with a mammogram or a prostate check or a colonoscopy. Even with our best tests, however, it still takes cancer growing eight years inside your body before those tests even detect it, two years before it's considered lethal. And so even though our five-year cancer survival rates have gone up, our cancer mortality rate is increasing to the point where they're expecting it to surpass cardiovascular disease, specifically heart disease. This year is the leading cause of death. If you wait until you feel disease, it's setting you up for failure. How much do those two diseases account for? Over half of all deaths in the United States. Cancer is considered 95% lifestyle preventable and lifestyle reversible in most cases. But we have to know where to go to get that. And so the, the last thing, and I, I don't want to throw the medical system under the bus more than I have to, but just illustrates the point. The third leading cause of death last year was emergency room errors. 440,000 deaths due to emergency room errors. Not because the medical system is bad or evil, or even they're doing things wrong, but because we've been waiting until we feel something go wrong. And very often that leads to a catastrophic place, right? If you wait to take care of the overwhelming fire in your fireplace and it gets into the forest, you blame the firefighter for the accident that he had and not dealing with the forest fire that you created. We don't do that. But what that means is number three, number three, is that we have to actually take personal responsibility for our health. We like to give that to other people, right? We have a healthcare system. I'm gonna give it quotes, right? A healthcare system. Is it really a healthcare system? No, it's a disease management system. We have health insurance. Is health insurance for health or is it for catastrophic interventions, right? Whoever wants to use their car insurance, who wants to use their homeowner's insurance. But when you go to the doctor to help get you healthy, you ask, do you take my health insurance, expecting them to get you healthy? Health insurance, by definition, states that any care that seeks to prevent disease, promote or enhance the quality or longevity of life is not considered medically necessary and therefore will not be covered. Your health insurance, your health care system, your health care is not getting you healthy. It's failed to do so. The doctors that we train to take over this health care system are trained in disease management. So we can't turn to them for health, except in a crisis, in which case they'll get us as stable as possible. Their, their job is to get you stable, to mm -hmm. not let you die. Mm -hmm. But they haven't been trained in how to get you healthy. And so you have to know what health is. So let's start there. Right. Health is a state of 100% optimal function in the ability of your body to heal. 
Zero percent function then would be what? Yeah. Dead. Anybody here want to try to get there? No. Faster? No. no. no Slower, right? No. So we're all going to die. I can't prevent that. No. Nobody can no. prevent that. That's that's just what it's going to be. No, death and taxes, right? 100% of the time. However, we all have this one life to live. And we know that these lifestyle preventable diseases are the main causes of death. And so if we can focus on that function, we can stay healthy. We're going to get you there. So our topic of the day is toxicity. But my goal overall is to see the town of Lincoln transformed. Transformed. From a health perspective, I think this is actually going to work now. Wow. Look at this. Look at that. There yeah. we go. Very nice. Oh, it's focused. Okay. Well, happy we're gonna <laughs> yeah, we were going to be so happy. Now, let's see this healthcare system transformed. It has yes. to start with our mindset and it has to start with us as individuals. Because if we keep going back to the same place over and over again, asking for the same things, the system's never going to change. But then it can't just be us, it has to be our families. We have to influence the people around us and bring them into this thing. If we want to be healthy, if we want our healthcare system to change, it has to start here today, right? So we're going to be the standard for that. We're going to be the flagship, the place where people come to for that. And we've been seeing some of that this week. So when it comes to toxicity though, and these are the things I'm going to be talking about today, these are known carcinogens, they're known hormone disruptors, they're known estrogen mimickers, and we're not I'm going to get technical. I'm not going to get too technical for you guys today, but we know we're exposed to 2.1 million toxins daily, and that's coming from everywhere. We're not going to avoid exposure, but we can minimize exposure. It's coming from our food. It's coming from our water, specifically tap water is a big one, and the environment, the air that we breathe, the cosmetics, the beauty products that we put on our skin and on our bodies, the cleaners that we use on a daily basis, and then the food storage and food preparation containers and just items that we're using, these all are contributing to our toxic load. Step over here for a second. So I've talked about the bucket theory of toxicity. I don't like it. I like the funnel theory of toxicity, right? Okay. Okay. The reason why I like the funnel theory of toxicity is because when you look at your digestive system, and really, your skin, your lungs, all these different systems in our body, they're all exposed to toxins. And whatever it is, it takes in some of those toxins to your bloodstream. The digestive system is specifically a tube that goes from your mouth to your backside, right? It goes back and forth all the way through and absorbs some of those things. But it basically, it funnels all this stuff in. So there's a lot of good stuff that we take in our mouths. There's a lot of good stuff that we put on our skin. There's a lot of good stuff that we breathe into our lungs. But then there's also some of this bad, and we're going to get into some of this bad. But when you start getting these toxins in, right, you drip one drop through a funnel, it goes out the bottom, right? You drip two drops down a funnel, it goes out the bottom. You drip a slow stream down the funnel, it all goes out the bottom. But what happens when you take a bucket all at once and you dump it into a funnel? It starts overflowing out the top. Now, when it overflows out the top, that's symptoms. That's where symptoms start. Now, all of it, right, if it gets clogged up here, that starts to decrease the function down this chart. Symptoms typically start at about 60% function. And so then when you overload yourself with these toxins, whether it's coming from the food or the environment or our cleaning supplies or beauty supplies or our water source or our clothing or our cookware or food storage or our medications, I was getting a, a dental treatment about well, I guess, you know, 11 years ago, 12 years ago. I had a, I think I had a cavity or something. Uh, they were drilling it mm -hmm. out and they gave me uh, Novocaine. Mm -hmm. I had taken a cold medication that morning. They didn't even ask. Yeah. It elevated my blood pressure. I almost passed out. Yeah. Yeah. And they asked me what, what happened and I had just taken those things. Now, Neither of those things would have in and of themselves said it, but the combination of those things absolutely does it. And we know that, that a lot of medications interact like that, but there's no medication that's healthy for a healthy person. So what makes it healthy for a sick person? Is it actually increasing their function? No, it's addressing a symptom. 
and not the root cause of the symptom, just the chemistry of that symptom. And oftentimes that symptom is actually a healthy signal that your body's trying to send you to try to get your attention to actually take care of the underlying cause. And a lot of the times those causes are coming from these sources or these sources up here. So what does this affect? Well, it affects everything. I mean, we look at cancer specifically, 95% of this is due to diet and toxins, which kind of undermines this idea of, well, my mom had cancer, my great aunt had cancer, I'm destined to get cancer because I have the cancer gene. You can have the cancer gene, and this is still true. Your genes load the gun, but your lifestyle pulls the trigger. So if you expose yourself to all these toxins through your food supply, through the foods that you eat, through the air that you breathe, you're much more likely to have that trigger pull. And so if we want to avoid something like cancer, we're going to have to do things differently. So the, the word of the day is to exit conventional. And if you're a believer like I am, this takes me right to Romans 12 too. Do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can test and approve what God's will is, is good, pleasing, and perfect. Well, God's the one that tells us to exit conventional. Mm -hmm. He's the one that tells us to not look like the people around us. You know, you, you, you look at the Old Testament, and there's some weird stuff in the Old Testament, right? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, some really severe things that God did to separate his people from the surrounding tribes. In fact, he waited until the surrounding tribes were so sinful to actually do anything about it, to move the children of Israel into the promised land. But then he told them, be separate, be a city on a hill, be a light on a, on a candle stand to light up the whole room. And he didn't say, he didn't say reject everybody else. He said, reject their ways. Yes. Don't do the things that they're doing. He gave them dietary laws. He gave them lifestyle laws. He gave them religious laws, things that were completely and totally different from the culture that they were in. How much different is that than the world we're in today? What gods are we worshiping that take us away from our faith and our creator? Gods of comfort, gods of convenience, gods of not wanting to offend anybody. You know, gods of science, right? We put science on the same pole that we put God on. We don't understand how God works, but we've got this tool called science, and it seems to explain some things. I'm not saying that we can't use science as a great tool, and I'm going to reference a lot of research, peer-reviewed research. I got a book of peer-reviewed research up front. I absolutely love science. I don't worship science. I don't trust science. Science isn't to be trusted. Science is a process. It's a tool to interpret the information that we gather from the world around us. And so I don't just take science at face value. I interpret it in light of God's word yeah. and his plans and his purposes that he has for our lives. And so we do have to exit that conventional. Anybody seen this movie? Mm -hmm. Matrix. Yes, Matrix. So early 2000s. I love this movie when it came out. So if you haven't seen it, you should go and you should watch this scene in particular. So this is this is where Neo, the guy that's in the reflection of the glasses, he goes, he's, he's been kidnapped by Morpheus because he's this hacker. He feels that things in his world aren't quite right. Anybody feel like things in your world yeah. aren't quite right anymore? Yeah. Morpheus kidnaps him away from these people that seem to be chasing Neo, that look like they want to arrest Neo for being a hacker. And he sits him down in this abandoned house, or what seems to be an abandoned house, and he offers him a choice. He says, you take the blue pill, and you wake up in your bed, and things will be exactly the same. But take the red pill, and we'll go and see how, how, down, how far down this rabbit hole goes. And so this is this is your warning. From here, things change. Your life changes. If you're not willing to start making these changes, your eyes are going to be open. You're going to you're going to start to hate to see some of this stuff around you. But you have to be ready, too, because it's it's everywhere. You know, and it's not just toxicity. We'll go into more on some other things. Not as much this time, but next time. So. All right. So what are the top toxins? You guys give me some ideas here real quick. What do you think is the most toxic things we're exposed to? Car exhaust. Car exhaust. Yeah, that's yeah. that's not good. Yeah. Um, that You're going to be surprised here in a minute. Uh, keep going. Pesticides. Yeah, absolutely. Plastics. In our food. Plastics. That's a good one. 
Household cleaners. Household cleaners. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get into some of this. Yeah. So cleaners, number one. Yeah, absolutely. We have to look at our cleaners. Um, yeah, and you know, I'm gonna do my best to not name any name brands here, but we're gonna there's gonna be a tool. So if you guys have your smartphones on with, I'd say get those out and get those ready because we're gonna go to ewg.org and we're gonna start looking at some of the toxic lists. And there's gonna be a smart code up here, but it's gonna start here. Disinfectants are some of the most toxic cleaners out there. Um, you know, number one, they have fragrance. If you see the word fragrance on the back of a label, do you know what that means? It means something that's got so many chemicals in it that's so proprietary that they don't wanna give you any ingredients. Yeah, and it's very, very highly toxic. Colors, artificial colors, very toxic. Estrogen disruptors, mimickers, propylene glycol, known carcinogen. And that's in our disinfectants. And so when you go to the grocery store anymore, what do they hand you? A wipe, right? Yeah, clean, off. clean off your cart. And then some, they have been actually spraying the carts down. Yes, yeah. And on the bottles of those things, they say, after you apply this, wash it with water. Oh, oh, yeah. And how are you going to do that? Yeah, and how, how are you going to do that? It won't be done. And so, yeah, it, it's too much. Um, there was actually a study done. They were doing uh, some research on some mice at Virginia Tech. And the, re the lead researcher, she was female, um, she, she said that um, all of a sudden she noticed that their control group was getting some really weird results. And so she kind of went through it, trying to see why the control group in this study was actually the one that was seeing negative results. And it turns out the room that the control group was getting stored in went from being just regularly cleaned to they started using an ammonium compound ammonia compound to clean the room. And they started to develop all these different processing disorders with this. And so some of these cleaners that we're using and not just disinfectants are really highly toxic, you know, and, and can really create just about any symptom in your body. So smart code, anybody know how to use these QR codes? Oh yeah. Yeah, so this will take you specifically to the cleaner section. So I want, I want you guys that do have your smartphones while we're, while we're going through this, go ahead, get to that spot. Yep, get your camera facing the right direction. <laughs> yep, and it should bring up a link and you should be able to go to this website and start browsing through some of these. And you can actually, if you want to, you can take this home and you can scan the barcodes of your cleaning supplies and it scores it. EW, the Environmental Working Group scores this on a scale of zero to 10 to show you how toxic it is. And then it shows you why it's toxic too. The types of things in your body that it actually creates. And so back when I was learning this about 10 years ago, you know, I, I started doing this. And so I've, I've developed a comfort level with this so I don't have to do this as much anymore to know which products are toxic and which ones are not, but it changes. Brands change, you know, formulas change and it affects things. So anybody get to uh, anything surprising on the website? We're getting to the website. Yeah, not yet. Okay, well, when you get there, let's, let's find some. So next, next category, heavy metals. So according, according to this report that was done on heavy metals, uh, what they found is that heavy metal exposure actually builds up in your system. Metals don't like to leave your system. They bind to things. They get stuck in your bloodstream. They go places. I mean, there's some, some metals you need, right? Anybody need some iron in their diet? Anybody need some copper in your diet? Yeah, absolutely. Zinc in the diet. Some of those are good, but things like aluminum, things like mercury, these are some of the most toxic chemicals on earth and they're just metal, but they're in so many things that we're exposed to. So what do they lead to? Things like cancer, memory loss, cardiovascular, skeletal, blood, immune system, kidney and renal problems, lung damage, reproductive de and developmental disorders, mood swings, headaches, contact dermatitis, neurological issues, nerve joint and muscle disorders, vomiting and nausea, brittle hair and hair loss. I mean, some of you guys might be experiencing some of those things and it could be coming because of metal toxicity. So this is the type of thing that we actually need to test and there's tests available for this. So ladies, mm -hmm. cosmetics. So this was a report done on beauty supplies. So they did 49 different makeup items that they were testing. 
And you can believe that these were name brand items, things that you'll find at Walmart or, or over at the drugstore plate. I mean, even just online. They found that 96% of them contained lead. Yeah. Gross. Lead. That's pretty bad. If you're not getting enough iron in your in your blood, it could very well be that lead is contributing to that. 90% contain beryllium. 61% contain thallium. Thallium used to be used in murders because it was hard to detect in the bloodstream. Oh my. Yeah, and this is in your cosmetics. 51% contain cadmium, 21% or 20% contain arsenic, another poison, right? And so this, this is in our cosmetics and because it's not going in your mouth, it doesn't get the safety protection that a lot of the other products do. And so rule of thumb, if it's a, a beauty product, if it's something you're putting on your skin, just assume that at least 25% is making it into your bloodstream. And we see this, mm -hmm. we actually measure this in the bloodstream. And so a, a good rule of thumb with that is then, if you're putting it on your skin, it should also be safe to put in your mouth. Oh. <laughs> right? So if it's made out of coconut oil and it's made out of you know essential oils, a lot of those things are safe to put in your mouth. So then you can assume that it's safe to put on your skin. Always watch for a reaction. There's such a thing as food sensitivities and allergies. And some, some of the natural things are also harsh on you too. I mean, some people used to actually take arsenic for their health because it would make your skin clearer, short term. Oh yeah, you get a little term. more growth. Yeah, very short term until it built up in your system, right? You get that funnel filled up and you start overflowing with those symptoms. So you want to go to the beauty product set section? There's your QR code. And what I would suggest is even if you can't get this to work, go to ewg.org and then go through your house, go through your beauty products, scan that barcode. If it doesn't have the barcode registered, go in and type in what you're doing and rate that on a scale of zero to 10. And then start with the products that are most toxic, start replacing those. Some of you may go home and just throw everything away. Start fresh, start at the bottom of that list, go to the healthy side of that list and just get those ones that are zero and one and maybe even two and use those products instead. But for cleaning products, what would be a healthy alternative? Vinegar, yeah, yep, equal parts vinegar and water works very well as your acid, but works for your base. Baking soda. Is baking soda mixed with water. Yeah. I, I, that's how I clean my toilet. I dump a little bit of baking soda mm -hmm. in the bottom. I let it sit, scrub it around, and then flush it down. Vinegar is what I use to clean my floors. Here at the office, we use a, um, a proprietary compound that is basically vinegar water, but they send electrical current through it so that it binds the chlorine with a little bit of salt in there. So you get HCl with that going together, and then it kind of dissipates on the table after it's had a chance to do its disinfecting. So it's pretty cool. Um, what, is, what is the name of that? I've got it in the bottle over here. Yeah, force of nature, force of nature. So if you guys want, you can buy that for your home. I, I get that online. Uh, I really should partner with them. We'll get you guys force a discount on that. Yeah, force can of nature, you, excellent cleaning product there. Can you get it at no, you have to order it online. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's online only. Currently, currently. I bet if it catches popularity, oh, really? places like Red Clover and Costco and, you know, natural grocers will start carrying it. So how about our pots and pants? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh. Anybody like nonstick? Yeah. Oh, I love nonstick, right? Yeah. Yeah, the problem is Teflon. So anybody see the documentary uh, Dark Waters? Ooh. No, I love Teflon. Documentaries, yeah. Go go look it up. And you'll throw your all your Teflon in the trash. Oh my. Yep. I mean, the, I I believe it was the Dupont company. They were dumping the Teflon, the PTFEs, into the water, and it was leading to all sorts of health issues for the community. So PTFEs. The problem with these is that they're persistent organic compounds, meaning that you don't get rid of them. They pass down generationally. If you have kids and you have this in your system, the kids end up with this. Oh. Yeah. PFOAs, another thing, polyfluoroorganic something. Yeah. But PFOAs as well. These, you know, they're found in Teflon and nonstick cookware. They're actually found in many disposable masks. 
So those of you guys that like to wear those blue masks, they actually have that in there. So when you're breathing in, you get a little dose of that. And so I, I, I don't have my mask on me. When I do have to go someplace where I wear a mask, I wear a, uh, uh, what's it called? Gator. A gator. Yes, a gator. And it's just pure cotton, right? It's just stretchy Look. cotton Look. material. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so Poison. yeah you yeah. and then you want to get something that's not going to catch stuff so you need to wash it out regularly so it's just not good yeah. and so you know what our society is doing right now is it's, it's exposing <laughs> us to more toxins increasing this toxic load decreasing our overall function and we're hoping that by deep cleaning everything that we're actually and staying away from each other and masking up that we're going to prevent the transmission of a virus that only makes sick people sick, but in the meantime, we're making ourselves more sick yeah, and making it more likely that we get sick. And that's one of the main reasons why in the United States, we're, we actually see higher infection rates than in a lot of other countries. Definitely in those countries in the Southern hemisphere that get more equatorial sunlight and those vitamin D3 levels, mm -hmm. and absolutely. So PTFEs is a major part of this because Anybody not like to cook and you know nonstick? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's a pain, especially if you're cooking scrambled eggs, right? Oh, oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, what are, what are some healthy alternatives? <laughs> so, obviously, stainless steel. What are some other good options? Cast iron. Oh, cast, cast iron is yeah. good. I, I would, you know, used I used to say it was healthy, a healthy option because you get some iron from that, but it's not. You don't want to eat iron to get iron right you want to get that from your vegetables you want to get that from a food source so i love cooking in cast iron but i would say stainless steel is a step higher step better what's another good option glass glass is good if you're baking especially how about ceramic ceramic breaks down a little bit faster as a pan than a stainless steel would and so you have to replace it every year or two but at least at least then you're you're not oh, getting all this stuff in your system. I'll tell you what, replacing your pans every year or two is yeah. way cheaper than paying for cancer. Yeah. Right? Yeah, let's let's prevention, right? Mm -hmm. Prevention mindset instead of that reactive mindset. All right. You guys have heard about plastics. <clears throat> have you heard about microplastics? Oh my gosh, smaller yeah. plastics. Than Plasticizers. Those? So essentially the softer the plastic is the more plastic is going to leach into oh, okay. the food that it's holding. Because that's right, oh. right? That's how we're using this, right? Yeah, we, we take a Rubbermaid container or, you know, you know, some of these containers that we use to store food, we stick our food in the microwave, we heat it up, and this is where it activates and really starts leaching. Or if it's an acid as well. Now, we also find this plastic in the lining of tin cans. They use it to help seal it in. And so you guys have probably heard of BPA, right? Yeah. So BPA is often found in the lining of these tin cans. So canned food, canned vegetables are not as healthy because of the toxicity, but also because they have to heat it up to seal it. When you change the temperature, it starts to break that down. But they did this study in Europe and they found, they tested urine. They found that 90% of those people that were tested, right? Healthy individuals that were just living a typical life between 2016 and 2017 had plasticizers in their urine. It was measured phthalates, the plasticizers. These are known carcinogens. Again, known hormone disruptors. So what do we do to exit conventional? What's a good alternative to those plastic containers? Glass. Yeah, glass, absolutely. I love my glass containers. Now you're gonna have to get a plastic lid, right? Mm -hmm. Or something like this where it's, maybe not plastic, maybe it's a cork type of top to it as well. But so long as that's not touching the food or you're not heating it up in there. Oh, now what's another oh, plastic? So like a, anybody buy coffee out? I love like, coffee. Yeah. Anybody go out to buy coffee? Yeah. 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 And then it comes with that black lid on it. Uh -huh. oh. How thin and flexible is that lid? Very. Thin. Very. Black plastic. You can just assume that black plastic, no matter how hard it is, is has one of the highest concentrations of those plasticizers. And, yeah. So if you're going to get a coffee from those places, ask for it without a lid. Make sure it's a paper cup, right? What did I give you guys for your coffee? Paper. Right? Yeah. And... If it's going to be a lid, white plastic is better, but it's still, what's what's the coffee doing? It's steaming, 
the steam condenses on the top and then it runs right back down into your coffee. So you're getting that dose of plasticizers and phthalates from that coffee. BPA if it's in there as well. So just get your own cup. Have you guys seen my cups? Yeah, I've got the hard plastic lids. They're never colored black, right? So avoid that black color and then make sure that you're not getting the cheap plastic lids either. This is good. Now, if you bring me coffee, I will accept it and I will drink it regardless of the color. Black plastic. Oh, there yeah. you go. That's true. Oh my gosh, black plastic. <laughs> yeah, no, it's everywhere, right? So water. Oh my. Oh. Water. So tap water. Yeah. Let's yeah. think about tap water. Yeah. yeah. So first off, what did they put in it to kill everything in it? Chlorine. Chlorine, Chlorine. Chlorine right? Chlorine. And so then we go and we take our shower. It's hot, right? It's steaming. Yeah. We're breathing that in. It's hitting our skin. Mm -hmm. A 15-minute shower is equivalent to drinking eight glasses of harmful water mm -hmm. for the amount of exposure that you're getting. And that's just chlorine. Yeah. We look and we, we've done some studies. And you can look. EWG has articles on water specifically. And it, it'll even break it down by region in different places. So you can see the different levels yeah of harmful chemicals that are in there. But we see that we actually get an active dose of, um, uh, oh shoot, what are the medications? They're the most common ones, right? The ones that pass through urine, especially, uh, uh, like the hormone birth control. You get an active dose of that. You get an active dose of cholesterol medication from that as well. And all the potential side effects from that as well. What, and yeah, statin drugs make it through your bloodstream and get into the water supply. Yeah, and they aren't filtered out, they aren't killed by the processing that we have in our water filtration plants. And so what do you have to do to get that stuff out? Well, we have to exit conventional and we have to get a filter. So if you're renting right now, get a shower filter. Get a filter for your kitchen sink and make sure that the water you drink and the water that you shower in is as clean as possible to avoid a lot of these chemicals that are coming through. Even just chlorine itself. Chlorine is a nerve toxin. It's a neurotoxin. It'll absolutely start to kill some of those nerve cells if you get too much exposure. This is one of the reasons why I don't recommend bleach, right? Bleach, chlorine, it was used in World War I in trench warfare to clear out the trenches so that you could just come through and move your army up into that next trench. But then bottled water isn't a safe alternative either, is it? No. Plastic. No, even if it's reverse osmosis, because what? It's in that soft mm -hmm. plastic. There's actually some bottled water now that actually starting to put water inside of paper containers. Yeah, paper containers. There's glass bottles out there as well that you can buy. But the best course of action is to get your own glass yeah. or stainless steel containers, fill them up in the morning, make sure that that black plastic doesn't touch uh -huh. it, and then take it with you through the day. And then know where your refill stations are, know where you can go and get that reverse osmosis system. You go through an airport, they're just running that through a copper filter. You need that reverse osmosis or you need a high level filter, like a charcoal filter, like it, with a Brita system, not, not some of these, or not, not Brita, sorry, Berkey system. Brita is the cheap one that doesn't actually do anything. It takes out enough of the chlorine that you don't taste it, but it doesn't filter out anything else. Yeah, a lot of these high level, or the big names don't do much more than change the flavor because that's all they really want to sell is, you know, flavor that you'll drink. You know, they keep it cheap so that you keep coming back. But Berkey is what I use at home. You know, we still rent our house. And so we've got shower filters on our showers so that our kids and us, we don't get that exposure. And then we have uh, a British Berkfeld filter on our counter. And we fill that up with water on a daily, daily basis. So you can get other filters. Uh, we use Aquasana shower filters, the ones that we use. But there's other good ones out there. It's just Aquasana, A-Q-U-A. S-A-N-A. -A. It's basically a cylinder-shaped thing that hangs down from the shower head and it pushes the water through and then back up and out this shower head. So you can attach it to just about any shower spout. What about a bathtub? Yep, bathtub too. Um, if it's just a bathtub with just a spout, that one you're going to have to go back up the plumbing line to get a filter on there. If you own your own house, I would suggest investing in a reverse osmosis system, but then that stopping there actually 
Also reintroduce minerals afterwards. Make sure that you're getting a system that reintroduces minerals because if we take the minerals out of the water, we're gonna reduce our overall mineral content and what we're getting. And we're already so depleted anyways, right? We need to make sure we keep those minerals in our water as best as possible. Food. So what's a monosodium glutamate? MSG, right? Where do you find MSG? Everything. <laughs> yeah, just about anything. And has anybody ever done a, a like just a, a Google on um, the names of monosodium glutamate? No, it's it's a list of almost a hundred different things that they've renamed MSG as, so they can put it in there without you knowing that it's in there. So do a Google search, look up where you can find or what else is called monosodium glutamate. You know, this is one of those things that disrupts. Uh, even just neurotransmitters. Oftentimes, people that struggle with migraines really respond poorly to monosodium glutamate. Aspartame, is that is that God food or is that man food? That's it's, man. That's yeah, man food. no, the, man it's aspartic acid can bind and breaks down into formaldehyde. Oh. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah formaldehyde. <laughs> Again, a known carcinogen. <clears throat> Nitrates, we all know that we should get nitrate free yeah. food, but nitrate free pork. Is still pork, right? One of the highest toxicity contents and uh, one of the highest acidity contents as well. Artificial colors, yeah. Estrogen disruptors. If you want to, if you want to get a hyperactive child really bad behavior, give them some artificial colors. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fruit loops. yeah, fruit loops. Yeah. Great breakfast, right? <laughs> Refined oils. So oils, the further away they get from the soy the source, not sauce, further away from, they get from the source, the more they break down and become inflammatory when they hit your system. So oils that require more processing are therefore more denatured and more inflammatory to your system as well. So example of a healthy oil would be eating an avocado, eating a coconut, eating an olive. Next step down from that would be eating those oils instead, mm -hmm. not quite as good, but still, if you need to cook something with it, coconut oil, avocado oil, great at medium temperature. Olive oil, I'd just avoid heat altogether, but if you're gonna do anything, just a low heat, because it will burn, right, with the mm -hmm. popcorn. <laughs> yeah, but do it at a low Clarified temperature. Clarified butter. Yeah, clarified butter, if you can handle dairy, you know, it does pretty well. Um, but then genetically modified foods. So it's just amazing to me. We're one of only a handful of countries that even allows genetically modified foods to be produced. And the main reason for that is because genetically modified foods are so much more pesticide heavy. And pesticides, we know, build up in the system that they disrupt hormones. They dis some, some of them even have some metals in them. It's just not a good place to be. And then when it comes to our food as well, you need to understand this principle of toxic bioaccumulation. So picture a fish in a stream. Mm -hmm. Let's say it picks up a chemical. It's a little bit of that chemical. It gets then eaten by a slightly larger fish. Mm -hmm. That fish is also exposed to that chemical, but then it eats a couple more of these fish that have that chemical. That chemical, it's foreign to its body. <laughs> God didn't design it to be exposed to that chemical, so its body stores it in its fat cells. It then gets consumed by a larger fish who eats a couple of these fish who have done the same thing. And so now you've got even more of that chemical in the large fish. And then let's say maybe a shark eats that fish. And it's going to take all those chemicals, it's gonna store it up in its fat cells, and then we're gonna eat that shark, or we're gonna eat that tuna, or we're gonna eat you know whatever fish that was, and it's going to have more of that chemical in it per concentration than maybe we'll say a sardine at the bottom of that food chain. And so when you're looking at which animal products to eat, you should be eating the animals that don't also consume other animals yeah. down Scavenging. the line. Yeah, yeah, the, the further down that line you get, but then there's also bottom feeders too. The things that God designed to filter out the junk should also not be consumed. And so really when it comes to animals, I, I do go back to the Bible yeah. for what our diet should look like, you know, in general. And, and right, it got allowed us to eat some things that maybe on an individual basis, our bodies respond to negatively. And that's a conversation we can have on a different day. But when it comes to toxicity, if animals were raised the way that God designed them to be raised, they can be eaten the way that God said that they can be eaten. 
without risk of health problems. General rule of thumb. Does that make sense? Yeah. Food by man instead of food by God. So how about supplements? So I, I think most people here in this room take my supplements. Um, and I'll yeah. show you a little bit more about that. But when I look at supplements, there's things that I look for specifically because some of you guys came in and you were taking other people's supplements and yeah. you thought you were doing good because you were investing in things that you've heard will help make you healthy. Right. But then when you showed them to me, I turned them around and I looked for mm -hmm. these things. Number one, does it have artificial sweeteners in there? Now, if you're taking a protein powder, I would just about guarantee that there's going to be an artificial sweetener in there. What are some artificial sweeteners? Aspartame, Aspartame we talked about. Mm -hmm. How about like Splenda? Splenda, I heard that. Stevia is not artificial. No, nope, that's a that's a herb. So that's you know so a plant that got designed. Um, what's another one that's artificial? How about sucralose? Yeah, saccharin. Yeah, NutraSweet is aspartame. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah, that, yeah, that sounds like a chemical, right? <laughs> yeah, but you look at these, you know, these yellow, the red, the blue packets that are sitting on the counter at the restaurant. These are not God foods. These are man foods, and they do things to our bodies that we don't want them to do. Artificial flavors, obviously, they're chemicals as well. So, if most chewable multivitamins or even chewable vitamin C or some of these other things will have that in there as well with chewable zinc is a big thing right now as well right artificial colors right you wanted to make it pink and look good or blue right blue is a natural food you find in most foods right yeah uh, the low bioavailability if it's if the chemical composition was put together in a lab do you think it's better and more easily absorbed than the chemical composition that God put together in food? No, definitely not. And we see that in the research. And then low absorption as well when you get some of those artificial ingredients. So those are the things that I look at, to look at when I'm looking at other people. Now, as far as our brand promise, as we promise that we will always make sure that none of those artificial things are ever in there. We will always keep our supplements gluten-free for those people that are gluten sensitive. Most will be dairy free unless it's like something like whey protein where it's coming from you know, a dairy source. But we're going to make sure that they're certified and registered by these safety organizations so that when we put them under an electron spectrometer, an electron microscope, you're seeing that it's actually getting out of it what it says it has in it. Many, many supplements have not only all those artificial ingredients, but they don't even have in them what they say they have in them. There was a research done on supplements sold by Amazon just a couple of years ago, and over 90% of them had less than 10% of what they said they had in them. And so even though you're not getting enough of most of these stuff and you want to buy more to get more, you're not getting out of it what you want out of it. Yeah. So we're going to make sure that that's good for you. Now, we do have this in stock today. This is our detox system. This used to be called the daily detox system, but since we introduced this, we found out it's actually so good and so strong that you shouldn't be using it daily. And so on the back of your note sheet that many of you are using for notes, it, it talks about a new product that we just designed called Max Cleanse. Many of the ingredients in here are the same. It's just a gentler compound, a gentler formula that you can use on a daily basis. This is one that you can implement into your daily routine to help take some of these sources of toxicity and just flush them through a little easier. When you need a more intensive formula, though, the detox system is designed to be able to be taken about quarterly. And I think I've said it in the past. I take it about three to four times a year. I'll just finish a, a pack of that detox system. But that max cleanse, very likely in the next year or so, will probably be added to the daily uh, daily essentials box. So you can count on that being part of our process as well with everything that you're getting in those supplements. Now, we don't just have to worry about a toxic body, right? We also have to worry about toxic mindset, right? If we, if we think pessimistically, if we have negative influences around us, we become a negative Nancy, right? Yeah. Or a negative Sharon or a negative Tom or a negative Joe, and, right? because we are what we surround ourselves with. And actually, you know, it, it's been said, and I, I believe it to be true, the, the people that you surround yourself with are the people that you become with. 
the five people, the average, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So I'm the average of April and Kirsten and Dietrich and Annika and Ezekiel and some combination of you guys, right? <laughs> Haley, Haley, that's right. Haley's around you too. So, you know, make sure that you're surrounding yourself with good things. And then two, where do you think some of this toxic negativity is coming from right now? TV news. Media. So I challenge you, if you do nothing else today, and especially you guys looking, listening on Facebook or YouTube, turn off the news. Yes. If the world burns down, you'll know. <laughs> It'll show up at your front door. You know? You're not going to miss it. I know we all have this fear of missing out, but it's so negative. And news media specifically is designed, they do research on this stuff, so they sell it to you better, so that you stay on their station. I don't care if it's Republican or Democrat or somewhere in between. They're trying to sell you fear. Yes, They are. Just look at the headlines from this morning. We're all going to die. The world's going to end because of X, Y, Z. It's either going to be the climate or COVID or something in between. Russia is going to attack us. North Korea is going to attack us. China. China is going to attack us. China may have already attacked us. It may be biochemical <laughs> warfare. Who knows? Yeah. I'm not here to tell you what's true or not yes, in the that's, news. That's the key word, what's true. But neither are they. They're there to tell you something that's going to get you right. Yeah. And that stress is just as toxic as any of these things in yeah. And so some of you guys walk in and you've got, you know, this shoulder tension across your back and you say, Doc, I don't know what's going on. I've got this thing up and I point to your exercise and I say, well, this is up. But what else has been going on in your life? What did you do differently? And usually we point to physical things. But what about chemical things? What about psychological stresses, right? A few of you have told me about the, the psychological stresses that you've been dealing with, you know, over the last couple of weeks and really 2020 as a whole. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my, my son Ezekiel was born mm-hmm. like two days before COVID, right? Yes, right? Yeah, his whole life. His whole life, he doesn't, like other than Kirsten and I and some of the families that come over, he doesn't know what an adult face looks like. Oh, face, Think about that. We, it took, you know, two, three months for our church to open back up. It was his first time at church. You know? Was he scared? Uh, No, he was he's a good baby. He's a good baby. baby. You know, Annika, she's three now, one third of her life. Adults have masked up for that. Dietrich, he goes to school, and yeah, I I wrote him a a mask exemption note because I'm concerned about some of these chemicals that they get and some of the psychological stress. But he goes into the bathroom and he hears from the older kids, if you're not masking up, you're killing people. Never mind that. The research says that children do not get this or pass this on. Isn't that amazing? Why we can't listen? Yeah, we don't. I don't listen. And it's just so toxic and it beats us down. We have to start surrounding ourselves with positive stuff. We have to, you know, go back to places like this where you're taught that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah, you know, if if this stuff was all gonna kill us, right? If the germ theory of disease was correct, we'd all be dead. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yes. We would all be dead a long time ago yeah. because those germs would have got us. And really, we know now there's more germs in and around and on our bodies than there are anything else, including us. Yeah. There's more viruses <laughs> in the air than there is actual air. There's more viruses in our body than there are even bacteria by a factor of 10. And bacteria is 10 times more than us. So really, who's the host? <laughs> really, we should all be dead if that was true it's not completely false there's some credence there I'm, I'm going to give them that but yeah, just get out of this toxic mindset get get out of like go away Like, at, there's a um, what is it the holy family shrine out here Yes. Yeah. they actually do retreats for a weekend where you shut everything off yes. and you just spend time in nature they have a website you can sign up for it just set it, set a weekend aside. You know, it, it's they have guys' weekends and girls' weekends. And then once you do it for a weekend, that's your weekend for the rest of your life. They sign you up forever. And you can do it once a year, you can do it twice a year, you can do it three times a year. There's always a waiting list, but it always opens up because people can't make it in. 
just go and get out. And you can you can participate in the Catholic masses or you can go and just spend t- quiet time with God. But we need to exit conventional. We need to turn off yes. the technology. We need to get out of the media and we need to go clear our brain space. We need to go supernatural. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Right. So one of the best ways that we can detox though is actually through fitness, right? So I, I, I wrote this out here. I talked about the, the bowels being one way to detox. I talked to, uh, I, I mentioned breathing as a way to get toxins in. It's also a way that we get toxins out. You can smell this on somebody who's going through a detox. You actually smell some of the toxins coming out of their, their breath, but it also sweats too. We can actually measure things like BPA exiting the system through sweat. And so that makes it that much more important to get a shower, right? <laughs> but a good shower, shower, yeah, non-toxic shower, get one of those whole house you know, s- systems. But yeah, we have to be able to sweat. And so fitness is more than just exercise. And it's more than just the cardio that we're getting in for our heart. It's whole body. We see it affect digestion. We see it affect detox. We see it affect neurons and the way that our brains grow and develop. Healthy people exercise for so many more reasons than just getting fit and looking good and losing weight. It's to get that function level back up. And so one of the best ways to do that is high intensity interval training. If you just jump on a treadmill and you walk for an hour, you may never break a sweat. Anybody ever do that? Yeah. You go to the gym, you hang out for an hour and you walk. And it's it, great, good, you got your calories out, but did you detox during that? No. <laughs> Sorry, if you don't break a sweat, it's not coming out through your skin. You might get the bowel stimulated and get some more of that out later, but you didn't detox through that. But if you get in that same treadmill and for 20 seconds, you go as fast as you can, or you, you stand up in front of the mirror and you get a couple of wrist weights on and you punch as fast as you can, you're going to break a sweat, aren't you? Yeah, and it's going to be good. And it's going to release some of that off, even if it's just 20 seconds on 20 seconds off. And then you can also do it another way. You can do 60 seconds on and go maybe not quite at 100% of your capacity, but go like 80% of your capacity and you'll still break a sweat. So what we're going to be doing here starting next Saturday, so a week from today at 10 o'clock, or right after I finish my 10 o'clock adjustments, is we're going to start doing a max T3 class here. Right? We're going to do that. And I actually have a couple couple of people that have volunteered to lead other classes. We'll have uh, one week, we'll do like a Zumba style workout. Other weeks, it'll be more like a flexibility style training. Other weeks, it'll be that high intensity, get your sweat on. But either way, I'm going to keep the temperature up and we're going to sweat. And yeah, and you're going to go at your level. It's always about your level. Every single person here is going to be able to do the movements that we're doing together. And so if you want to set up your adjustments, your appointments to go in line with that, I welcome you to do so because I want to see everybody here start to live out these five essentials so that we can get healthier together. But then when we talk about all these systems that do actually detox, right? Our, our bodies are fearfully and wonderfully made. Do you think God knew that we, wouldn't, that we wouldn't come into exposure to some of these compounds, that we wouldn't be smart enough at some point to create chemicals that he didn't design us to interact with? would be combining this. He knows, yes. right? He knows everything. You know, he designed us so wonderfully that we could yeah. breathe out air and in doing so get rid of those toxins, that our blood would actually filter out toxins in the liver and kidneys and it would come through our urine and it would come through our bowels. You know, that he designed our skin to sweat and push this stuff out. But if we're going to be healthy, what system has to be working to keep those systems working well? Mm-hmm. Our central yeah. nervous system, right? Our brain has to be able to communicate through our spinal cord and out these nerves to every organ, cell, and tissue in our body. For our heart to beat, for our lungs to breathe, for a cut on your leg to heal, for our digestive system to take in good, organic, clean foods, the signal has to pass through there uninterrupted. And so in order to do that, he designed the spine. It surrounds and protects your brain stem, your spinal cord, and each of these nerve roots as it exits off to be in an ideal position. It should be straight up and down from the front with three 45 degree curves from the side. When it's in that position, your brain communicates with your body body wonderfully. But when it's out of position, even two millimeters or two degrees, that disrupts the signal going through there to a point 
where you're getting a 60% decreased function. 60% decreased function. If left there for even five minutes more, your prefrontal cortex doesn't fire as well. Your vestibular cortex, your proprioception, none of that fires as well. You see an increase in stress and the most common symptoms, the warning signs that your spine is stuck out of alignment are some of the most common things that we deal with on a daily basis. We take the top couple of bones in the neck and we move them out of position and we leave that there. Any surprise that you start to get headaches? No. Leave that there long enough, your inner ear goes up. Maybe you get an ear infection, maybe you get a little bit of compression in uh, your hearing, maybe you get a little ringing in your ears, maybe it even affects your balance. Your balance goes wrong because those top couple of bones are out of alignment. You move down into the middle of the neck, maybe the, the neck starts to hurt a little bit. You get a little bit of neck pain. The muscles start to spasm through there. You, it might even uh, start radiating down into the shoulder a little bit. But then as time goes on, those same nerves, they control your thyroid. And your, the most common <laughs> disorder in the United States right now is low thyroid. It goes hand in hand with obesity levels, right? Mm -hmm. Thyroid stops functioning. Weight gain starts going up. Leave that there over time, that starts decreasing. And of course we cover that up with the medication just like we do with the neck pain. We go down to the upper back. Those nerves go out into the upper back between the shoulders. Anybody have tight muscles back there? All that stress from watching the news, right? <laughs> Those same nerves go out to your heart and go out to your lungs. And we see as you shrink down, decreased lung capacity. Yes. We see people that struggle with asthma, they have more asthma attacks. You drop your chin all the way down to your chest, that's a 60% increased lung capacity, mm -hmm. just like that. You sit up and you take a deep breath in, you can feel the difference. We see blood pressure go up with those stress levels, don't we? Any wonder? Go down a little bit more. We start hitting the upper digestive tract. That mid-back pain, just lower than your shoulder blades. That gets tight, the vertebrae go off. We start seeing that you don't detox as well that maybe your insulin levels start going up, your blood sugar gets out of whack. We get down into the stomach there as well. We start getting a little bit of reflex. You know, we get spastic muscles, muscles as we go down into the low back and then we get a spastic colon. It stops pushing things out right. It stops absorbing things right. We get things like leaky gut and our gut starts expand or stops expanding. We go down a little further and we get those nerves come out to our reproductive organs, our hormones start going off, even while, you know, maybe our glutes hurt and we get that sciatica going down the leg. And then we just say, we go to our doctor and say, oh yeah, oh, you're just getting old. We expect some of these things to start going wrong. Never mind that research shows us that we should be living the amount of time, the prescribed time that God gave us. After the flood, he said, I will limit man's years to 120. Harvard research set shows us that we should be living to 120 without sickness and disease. Yes. We're only getting a third of the way there on average. And that number is going down. Okay. If we keep doing the same things over and over, we're getting any different results than everyone around us who's doing those same things is just insanity. And so we have to start by taking care of our own spines. Nobody's teaching you that. Nobody's assessing you for that. Not unless what? Something goes catastrophically wrong. Not unless that symptom, right? Mm -hmm. You've lost so much function that it starts mm -hmm. flaring up for you. And so who needs to have their spine checked? Everybody, Everybody right? Knows. If you don't have your spine checked, do you know how well you're functioning? Do you know if you'll be able to detox? Do you know if any of these things are gonna come out of your system? Do you know if that healthy food is going to get into your system unless you know that those nerves are healing and functioning well? And so for those of you that are regular patients, congratulations, you're doing that. We've got you set up so that every 12 visits, we're not only checking your spine, we're also checking that nervous system to make sure that it's functioning at or near 100%. But for those of you that haven't been checked, that's where this starts. And so we'll do an exam for you today. You're getting a friends and family discount on that. Uh, we can set that up for you before you go. And so that, that's our action steps to engage where we haven't engaged yet. And so if you're if you're watching on Facebook, you know, call our office 402-413-8825. We'll get you set up with those. Uh, if you're a regular patient already, let's start with where we're not. And I gave you a whole lot of things, right? I see whole pages of paper filled up with notes on things that we need to be started out with. Maybe it just starts with going and exploring the web website, ewg.org. 
maybe it starts with starting some of that max cleanse to help you out with some of those toxins that you know anybody here not toxic no okay good no liars in the house <laughs> we're truth tellers right yes yeah absolutely and we're going to keep ourselves accountable so one of the best parts about these classes and doing them in person is now we get some accountability. Mm -hmm. You know, you see each other here in the office and you get to say, hey, you know what? I was trying out this new ceramic cookware and you know, it's great. I really love it, but it's such a pain to clean, <laughs> right? right? I felt like it broke down so fast. Did you do anything different? And then we get ideas from each other. Like, you know, what, what do you use for yourself? So like that sodium lauryl sulfate stuff, like that's, that's not good for you, is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you're like, okay, well, no, we got a dish cleaner. So in your packet, you've got that non-toxic cleaning ingredients in your recipes that you can put together. Maybe start putting some of that together over the weekend. But That's then, why I we, yeah. um, have a patient here who sells um, Arbon. You know, everyone knows Rachel. Yeah, those are non-toxic. And Michelle Ayler, she does Dotor or DoTerra, DoTerra essential oils. Essential oils, and I am a big DoTerra. So my yeah. shampoo, conditioner, body wash, um, my yeah. Stuff that I use for dishwashing, my laundry soap, all of that's doTERRA. Yeah. I use oils for everything. Yeah, and those local sources, the people you know are always the best place to get it. Yep. But you can also go on that EWG site and it has those list of things that aren't. So we're going to pause. I'm going to let you guys go take advantage of the discounts that we have on supplements today. 15% off everything. If you wanted Max Cleanse, I'll let you pre-order it. You pay for it today. We'll order it. We'll get it in within about a week. So you can get started on that. Um, we're going to start carrying that if you guys start asking for that. So if you order it today and we order a whole whole bunch, we'll keep that on hand for you. Um, otherwise, you'll just have to let me know when you come back and then it will be about a week. Um, but then if for those of you that are part of our Wellness Warrior program, you get to combine your discount today and we're going to give you a punch. I'm going to turn off the Internet and we're going to go into some more advanced stuff. I'm hopefully only about 20, 30 minutes on this, but I really want to make sure that you guys are aware of what's going on out there. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Can I just make a pitch? Just a second. Yeah. Why don't you guys break and I'll give you, I'll give you the pitch when you come back. Oh, and we also have um, with today's detox 